B, put the fuck boy on notice. Fuck boy on notice. I'm the only lady else, still the realest nigga in the room. I break the internet top two and I ain't number two. My body, my ice, my cash. Y'all real, I'm a triple threat. Fuck it up and then leave. Come back, fuck it up and leave again. Top of the hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I feel like the lighting is a little bit orange. Okay, bitch. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a full face foundation routine. So pretty much I'm just going to be showing you um, what products I would normally use on my face and um, just a few different techniques on how I get a flawless foundation application. So if you guys are interested in seeing my magic, then keep on watching. So for starters, um, I do already have my brows done. So if I look a little weird, it's because my brows are done. So I kind of look like a naked mole rat. I feel like everybody looks so weird when we just have on brows and nothing else. But I have my brows done and I have um, a little bit of concealer put over my brows. And I'm also going to do an updated brow tutorial because I actually don't use the same methods. I actually use a powder now to do my brows and I found that they are so much more neat. Um, and they're not as harsh as if I use like a pomade. And they're a lot easier to work with with a powder versus a pomade as well. So I'll make sure to also do a video showing you guys how I do my brows. So for starters, um, I'm going to go ahead and moisturize my skin. I'm just going to be using some vitamin C. This is what I use on my clients. I'll either use this or some hyaluronic acid. This is really good for moisture. This is really good for like toning your skin and fading dark spots. So for me, I'm just gonna use this because I do still have like um, some hyperpigmentation. A lot of my hyperpigmentation has actually lifted and I'm really happy about it, but I'm still going through a series of like skin peels in order to get my skin really, really flawless. But for now, I'm happy with my progress. So I'm just gonna keep using my vitamin C. Now I'm also going to take a little bit of extra um, lotion on my fingertips and just go underneath my eyes because I have really bad bags like they're hereditary. I actually need to get like some Botox and have them filled in like to me that's how bad they are. Um, but this just really helps when I apply my concealer to stop them from creasing. Now there is another moisturizer that I would usually use, but I'm out and I haven't ordered any. So this is just what I'm using today. But the moral of the story is you want to make sure you moisturize well, especially if you're going to use a lot of powder, which I do. You want to make sure your skin is moisturized so you don't get that powdery, cakey, casket look. All right, so now that I have my skin moisturized, I'm letting that soak into my skin a little bit. I'm going to go in and use a little bit of Lucas Paw Paw ointment. This is what I use on myself and my clients. Um, this is just kind of like an ointment, but it's not as greasy as Vaseline or A&D ointment. And it's really good for moisturizing your lips. Now, if my client has small lips or if I just want my lips to be really plumped, I would either use my Too Faced um, Lip Injections Extreme to plump my lips and get them prepared. Or I would use, I don't know where it is. Um, or I would use, I think it's by Soap and, yeah, it's by Soap and Glory. They also have a sexy mother pucker uh, lip plumper that's really, really good to get your lips nice and plump. So I'm just going to start by making sure my lips are moisturized. And you want to do this when you start. So by the time you get to actually doing your lipstick and lip liner, your lips are well moisturized and they're already prepped in, especially if you're going to use a matte lipstick. You don't want your lips cracking and peeling and all that. So moisturize your lips, major key. Okay, so for the most part, I don't really um, wear eyeshadow every day just because I'm still working right now. So I don't really always have the time to sit there and do eyeshadow. But I do like for my eyelids to be the same tone as the rest of my foundation. So I'm going to be using my LA Pro Conceal Concealer in the color Fawn. And I'm just going over my eyelids a little bit and making sure that they are even. This just helps for it to not look so dark. Because bags and dark eyes are hereditary in my family. So I kind of suffer from that. And I hate to have, I would hate to have like a beat face. And then like real basic looking eyes. I don't know. It just looks weird. I mean this is something that y'all need to do. Make sure you just put like a skin tone color concealer on your eyes. Just to even out your whole face. 
So now that I've let my um, moisturizer kind of start to soak in a little bit, I'm going to be going in with my favorite primer um, right now. And that is the Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer. I don't know if y'all can see that. I think the light is a little bit too bright. And it's kind of reflective, so I don't think it's, my camera's going to focus too well on it. But this is how it comes. Um, for sanitary reasons, I do keep one for myself and one for my clients just because you are digging into it. And if and if it's not just you using it, or even if it is, it does come with like a little spoon or kind of like a flat palette type spoon. I would recommend using that just to stop with like transferring bacteria and breakouts. But me personally, I'm just going to put my finger in here and... Put this all over my face and this is really this is like one of the only primers that will actually make your skin look really smooth like i have smooth skin for the most part but this takes it to a whole nother level and it's not drying um it's not too mattifying it just literally makes your makeup look airbrushed like this is my favorite primer it's expensive for a primer i think it's 54 dollars, but you get what you pay for all right so my skin does look a little like casty with the primer on but don't worry it does not show through your um, foundation or anything like that all right so for my foundation of choice i'm going to be using my um ysl all hours foundation all hours all hours foundation um i like this foundation because it kind of gives me like a flawless matte finish um but it's closer to like the look of skin now this foundation is going to look really red when i put it on so do not read me for filth in the comments it's going to look red when i put it on but i am going to work with some other things to kind of even out the tone so i'm just going to take a little bit of this on a palette and if you guys um have a hobby lobby or maybe like a joanne fabrics or michael's near you I use for palettes on my clients instead of using like the standard palettes um, I'll go and get like a really pretty candle holder or something like that and it just looks so much better to use and it, they're easier to clean because it's just pretty much a mirror so I can use alcohol anything on it and it doesn't fade so just a little tip so I'm just gonna put a little bit of the foundation on my palette and then I'm going to mix a little bit of I'm gonna mix a little bit of my Denisa Myricks foundation in with it just because i know this is a little bit too red for me and this is too yellow for me so i'm just going to mix the two on my palette here all right so for application i just take whatever i mix my foundations with i usually do mix which is just like a normal brush and i start to apply that to my skin and i think mixing them actually came out to give me a really good color it doesn't look nearly as red as it usually looks on me all right so i have my foundation just kind of sitting on my face now you can choose to use a sponge or brush but me personally i like to use a brush and my favorite brush of all times is my real techniques i think this is the face buffing brush um and i just like it because it's like it's like a stippling brush but it's a little it's like the perfect amount of roundedness because it allows me to like stipple on my foundation and then it kind of buffs it at the same time so I'm just going to start to buff this into my skin and I did go underneath my eyes um, with the foundation as well. Now if I was like strictly highlighting and contour and really wanted like a chiseled look or really like defined makeup look, um, I would have not done that. I would have only used concealer under there to really help my concealer pop and give my face some dimension. but. For every day, I usually don't do that. So I'm just going to go in and buff this into my skin and making sure I get all of the areas that need to be covered, covered well. So I got my foundation applied, buffed out all good. So now I'm going to go in and start with my concealer. Now, depending on the day and what's in front of me, I'll either use this concealer or my NARS um, Radiant Concealer or my LA Pro Girl Concealer. It really just depends on how I'm feeling or the look that I'm going for. 
Um, for today, I kind of want like more of a dewy type finish. So I'm going to go in with my Kevin Aquan concealer. I really like the luminosity that this concealer has. So I'm going to go in in the shade 4 and 3 and mix them. 4 is kind of like the perfect... That one's empty. 4 is kind of like the perfect like NC40 four shade it's like the perfect nc44 shade and three is kind of like ginger in the nars but it just kind of helps to give like a little bit more dimension to my face so i like to apply my concealer um underneath my eyes a little bit on my forehead and the closer you can get to your brow, the better. But to be honest, the closer you get to your brow is also the more work. Because you got to like get it close without messing up your brow. So kind of make that rounded shape. Because it's just going to mimic how the light would normally hit your face. And then I just take whatever is in the middle of my forehead and I bring it down the bridge of my nose. And a little bit on my chin. I don't like to overdo the chin. It just looks weird to me. So I actually think that looks pretty good. I forgot that this foundation is a little bit darker than the other ones I use. So I'm not going to go in with any more lighter concealer. I don't want it to be too, too light. All right. So I usually don't really contour um, every day too much. And to me, this is not contouring. This is just making sure that your face does not look flat. This is just really adding color back to your face. If you actually look at your skin, even if you have perfectly clear skin, your your skin is not all the same shade all over. And when the light hits your face, you can really more so see the dimension of your face. So that's what you're just doing with your makeup. You're mimicking what you naturally would look like. So I'm taking a little bit of, um, I think this is Beautiful Bronze in my Black Opal Foundation Stick. And I'm just going along that line where... I want my nose to be contoured now in order to really get a contour i have to bring in my concealer it's kind of like a play on color so i'm going to add a little bit more of my concealer right along that dark line because when i blend it out it's going to make my nose look really really good so Doing that, and then I'm just gonna take a little bit of it under my cheeks, and I kind of like to curve up and kind of cup the cheek because I feel like it lifts your face when you do that. All right, so now that I got all my dimension and stuff on my face, I'm gonna go in with my Mario Badescu uh, Rose Water Spray. Disclaimer, this is not a setting spray. I used to work at Ulta and people used to come in talking about this is a setting spray. It is not. This will not help the longevity of your makeup or anything of the sorts. But this is the perfect spray for blending because Fix Plus, if you try to spray that to blend out your um, concealer or foundation, it usually breaks apart the foundation I found. But with this, I think it's a finer mist and it just has less, I don't know, maybe chemicals or something in it. But it works great for blending out your foundation or just refreshing your face before you add more foundation. But not a setting spray. Just so you know. So I'm just going to spray a little bit of this on my face. So Two shots of vodka. Alright, now I'm taking my Real Technique sponge and I'm just going to start blending out my light areas first and then go in and blend out my dark areas. And that's pretty much it. Um, you can use a beauty blender if you like, but I don't know. I go back and forth between which one is my favorite. They definitely give a different finish, but I'm used to working with this one now. So I'm just going to use this and blend out all of my concealer and foundation. And just make sure you take your time doing this because... Even though we're, we are putting different colors on our face to add dimension, um, you shouldn't be able to easily tell where one color starts, starts, and <laughs> starts, where one, where one color starts and where one color stops. So take your time blending it out, you know, make it worth your time. Now, 
as for the little bit of contour that we put on today, which wasn't a lot at all, I'm going to use my Morphe brush in G40 just to kind of blend that out. I just found it's easier to blend this out with a kind of small um, buffing brush rather than a sponge because sometimes when you use a sponge, you end up pushing all that product either up or down and messing up every thing that you just did as far as like color placement goes. So I'm just going to use this and blend out my little contour. Now when it comes to my little nose contour, I'm using a small, small pencil brush. Um, and this is the Morphe M169. Cause I really want to be able to control where that darker brown color goes and where my concealer goes. And I blend this all the way up till it's under my brow. And this just helps to like elongate your nose and bring it up. So we have the foundation blended out and it looks flawless, okay? It looks really good as you guys can tell, okay? Okay, look like I woke up like this. That's pretty much the look that we were going for today. Um, like I said in the beginning, if you wanted it to be more like dramatic or more chiseled, I guess, we would do a full highlight and contour. But that's not what we just did. We just added some dimension so our face doesn't look so flat. So now it's time to add our powder. I like to be quick with this because I don't want my eyes to crease. So for powder, usually I would not use something that gives flashback. Um, but because today I know for certain I'm not going to be taking any photos or anything like that, I'm going to be using my YSL Souffle Declot Powder in the shade 2 and 3 mixed with a little bit of my AC Cosmetics um, Trent or No Shine or No Color Powder. So what I do is I put a little bit on my palette and then I just kind of tap it out so that when I get it on my sponge, it's smooth. If it's not smooth on your sponge, it's not going to go smooth on your face and it's going to look real chalky when you try to blend it out. So I'm just tapping that over my palette and blending it out, baby. Blend it out. And you definitely want to make sure you set your eyes as well. Cause your eyes will crack and crease and you're gonna look crazy. Real crazy. Alright, so I got my under eyes and everything set. And mixing these two powders, oh my gosh, I love the YSL powder. The YSL powder is one of my favorite powders still. I just wish it did not get flashback so I didn't have to mix, but... As you guys can see, it looks absolutely flawless. So now I'm going to go in. And I did adjust the lighting a little bit. So, because it looks different. I feel like, okay. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Okay. Whatever. So now I'm going to go in and set the rest of my face. Now to help with transfer. Something that nobody told me for a long time. You're not supposed to set with a pressed powder. You're supposed to set with a translucent or a loose powder first. So I'm going to go in with my AC Cosmetics powder. Just because this one does have like a peach undertone. So it's not so white. I found when I used a powder that was like white like the Cat Set or a Derma Blend. Which is really good for tra or for, for not giving transfer. Um, I still found that it kind of made my foundation a little bit gray or left a cast. I'm still trying to figure out how to get those powders to not do that. But just to save time and effort today, I'm going in with my AC Cosmetics No Color Powder. And if you guys see me touching my face as I'm putting on my powder, it is because I'm trying to feel how much tackiness is left. You know, how wet the foundation still is. So I'm just taking a big fluffy brush and this is my Morphe... M527 and I'm just making sure I'm covering my whole face. So now y'all see why I told y'all to moisturize because I knew I was going to add a lot of powder but it really makes your foundation come all together a lot better. 
So to set my foundation, I'm gonna be going in with my MAC Mineralize Powder in the shade Dark. So now that I have my face set, I wanna go ahead and add some warmth to my face. So I'm just gonna be going in with a little bit of MAC Dark Deepest in their Mineralize Powder and a little bit of blush. So I'm gonna take the blush, and this is Love Joy by MAC as well. And I'm starting off by just patting that on my cheeks. Not swirling, not rubbing, just kind of patting that and letting the color um, just kind of catch itself to my face. Then it just kind of combat some of like the redness or apparent blushness. I'm just gonna go over my cheekbone area with dark deepest. And this isn't a contour powder for me at all. It's too close to my skin tone to be a contour powder, but it just kind of helps add some warmth or some dimension, especially um, now that I'm gonna go ahead and take that same small pencil brush and go set where I kind of contour my nose because you don't want something that's um, too red or too dark because it'll be apparent that you contoured your nose and that's not what you want, so. I'm just going over it with the mineralized powder. All right, so we are almost finished. Now it's time for just the final touches. Um, I am gonna go in with a little bit of highlighter. Usually, just kind of depends on the day if I wanna wear a highlighter or not, but today I am. So I'm gonna go in with my uh, Master Bronze Powder from Maybelline New York. And when I tell y'all, this is the best $8 I ever spent. This is the best $8 I ever spent, okay? If you don't have this, get your hands on it. So I'm just gonna use that first highlight shade in this palette, and they don't tell me um, what is the name of what, but I'm. it's just probably one of their Master Studio highlighters, honestly. But I'm just taking that down the bridge of my nose. Look at that. Oh my God. Oh my God. God. Oh my God. Like this video if you are obsessed with highlighter. Like, I love highlighter. Love highlighter. A little bit. And this is really, oh my God, look at that. This is real intense. So I only put this at the tops of my cheeks. I don't bring it all the way down because you just literally don't need it. Like, you don't. And I know a lot of people hate this, but mm, gotta have some highlighter on my cupid's bow. Have to. It just makes that whole top lip just pop. Now, if you like, you can add a little bit under your brow bone, but uh, that's just not my thing. So I'm not gonna add it there, but you can if you want. So last final touches is now, we're, I'm just gonna go ahead and add some mascara. And my favorite mascara of all times is, I look so crazy with this highlighter right here, but my favorite mascara of all times is the L'Oreal um, Luminous Mascara in Waterproof. It's just like their basic mascara. Cause this mascara does not crack, it does not shed on your face, and it is waterproof, okay? I can cry, I can cry, it can rain, and this mascara is not gonna run. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of like high-end mascaras. I feel like it's mascara, like, I, I have yet to try high-end mascara that I had to have. So this is what I like to use. And I am gonna add falsies, but you wanna make sure your own lashes are like well mascared before you do that so that they blend. Now, I am gonna add um, mascara to my bottom lash as well, but I just like to do that last because sometimes I'll, it, it won't be dry and I'll end up looking down and mess it up. So I just added them to my top lashes and I'm just going to apply my lashes and I'll be right back. All right, so I already have my lashes applied and the look is coming out together, honey. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do my lips. Now, depending on how you are, now that your lips are good and moisturized, you really can just wear them like this. You can add like a chapstick or like a clear gloss. Um, but for me, I am going to, of course, add some brown lip liner. Y'all already know what color it is. Chestnut by MAC, and I'm gonna give my lips a good line.
Now for lipstick, you can add a lipstick if you want. Um, but lately, I have just really been feeling gloss. Like, I love lip gloss. All of a sudden, I love lip gloss. So, I'm going to go in with um, Champagne Glam. This is from e.l.f. And this is the best. When I tell you, this is the best $5 I ever spent on a lip gloss. This is my new favorite lip gloss. Like, it's had me put down some of my matte lip glosses to wear this. So, I'm just going to add that. And it's just kind of like a soft gold gloss. But when I blend it in with my liner, it just, it's perfect. Perfect. Alright, so I have my gloss applied as you can see. And this is pretty much how I would do my makeup on a normal day so this is with no eyeshadow no extreme contour just a really good natural airbrush face um, i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and i will see you guys in the next one